just pause. Peep the silly pause right there. Hey everyone, in today's video, I am sharing four fun activities to help your second grade students really understand those numbers to 1000. Now, a few weeks ago, I did a video with some of my favorite ideas and activities to help reinforce numbers through 10. That video looks like that, and that is geared towards kindergarten and first grade teachers. And I always think it's funny how kindergarten and first grade were really honing in on those numbers zero through 10. In kindergarten, we're like introducing them and really having students understand the concept of those numbers. And then in first grade, we are reinforcing the importance of it as we move towards base 10. But then once students get it, they just expand. And so in second grade, at the beginning of the year, we are talking about those numbers all the way to 1000. When it comes to number sense with the numbers up to 1000, there are two main things I want my students to really understand. First, I want to make sure students really understand those place value concepts when we are talking about numbers to 1000. I want them to be able to look at a three digit and four digit number and understand, you know, what each place value actually means, what it represents, etc. And number two, I want students to be able to count, order, and compare all numbers between zero and 1000. If they are able to do both of those things, then they have a solid understanding of these numbers and we can move forward with other math skills. So in today's video, I have four different activities to help students build those concepts and really understand them. If you're ready to see what they are, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Activity is one I have shared before, but it is a differentiated game that is in my SJT math club. So I have this game available with numbers, you know, zero through 10 for kindergarten, really numbers up to 120 for first grade, and they can scaffold that by using, you know, numbers zero through 21st, and then also with numbers up to 1000 for our second grade students. This game is called Mix, Order, and Make, and I love this game because it really has students seeing different representations of these numbers. Let me show you how it's played. All right, so the mix order make game is pretty simple. Essentially, it comes with this map right here where there are three spaces for a bunch of different cards. Now in second grade, these are a bunch of random numbers that go from, uh, I think about 50 all the way up to 1000. There are not 1000 cards, they are random. Um, so you would print them all out and this is only one page of them, there's a bunch more. And all students would do is mix up these cards. They would flip over three of them, one, two, three. Then they have to go ahead and order them, which what do you know, these ones are already ordered. So once they decide that this is the correct order they go in, they move them up on the board. So mix, order, and now they have to make them. So we have 178, 305, and 408. So I have these base 10 blocks here because in first grade, the numbers go up to 120. And often on this mat, um, a lot of them are two digit numbers. So I will actually have them make the number here. Um, in second grade, you can do this two different ways. I do like to have these manipulatives available for students that need them, and they can physically make this number over on the side. But then with this board, what I have students do is I laminate this, and here I will have them draw a pictorial representation of each number. So this is not gonna be laminated, but let's pretend it is. So they would do 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 178. So this is that kind of representational format for students to understand these numbers. And then they would do 305, one, two, three, four, five, and 408. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would have students do this with a partner, that way they are checking each other's work. Then we would simply erase move these three cards out of the way, and flip three new ones. Mix, order, and make. They'd have to put them in order and repeat the process. So with that activity, students are working on numbers in a few different ways. First, they are identifying what the number says by looking at the actual number. They have to put it in order, so they're identifying where it belongs in terms of least to greatest. And they also have to make that number by showing a pictorial representation of what that number really means in terms of place value. Activity number two is a simple no prep game that is very easy to throw in a center to have students practice these numbers to 1000. And just as a quick note, I have this one as a freebie for 
for you, so let me show you how it's played. Here's one of the game boards. This one actually comes with three different game boards, and I have an editable one for you to type in whatever numbers you would like, but it is called Three Digit Place Value Roll. All students will need is a die and some game pieces, and they will start up at the top where it says Start. All students will do is roll that die and move that many spaces. And if students land on a number space, they will go ahead and make that number on their recording sheet. To do so, they need to fill out how many hundreds, tens, and ones are included in that number, and they also have to draw a pictorial representation of that number. Now, if students land on a star, they just move to the closest number. It's a very simple game that can be played over and over again, and I have the editable version, so you can start with some smaller numbers, move up to bigger numbers, you can add more numbers, you can make it really however you want it. But again, students need to be able to identify that three-digit number, as well as identify how many hundreds, tens, and ones are in that number. And I like that game because it can be played with a partner or independently. Make sure at the end of this video you grab that game. It is for free, listed in the description below. Activity number three is a great one, and it is to use an interactive number line. Now, you can do this a few different ways. You can grab some painter's tape and go ahead, and if there's a spot on your floor, you can make a big, long line to make a number line. You can also do it if you have some space on your wall, so it can go vertically. Or if you have some space on your whiteboard, just draw a big, long line with your whiteboard marker. Once you have that number line ready to go, you are going to want to make some benchmark numbers. So you will want to label the line however you're going to make this number line go. Let's pretend we were going to have zero on one end and 500 on the other end, right? So this number line will represent number zero through 500. And again, you can change this, this is interactive. So this will just be our example for now. And then sometimes what I like to do, especially at the beginning is I will put right in the middle, I will put 250, or I will you know, include my class in that discussion, what number would be in the middle. So those will be our benchmark numbers. Now this is called an interactive number line because it is interactive with your students. And I love to use this as a math warm up uh, to kind of kick off your math lesson. So what I would do is I would go ahead and give students different numbers for them to add to the number line. And I would do it in different ways. So some students might just get a three digit number that looks like this, 377. They have to come up to the board and they have to place it on the number line to the best of their ability. Or you know, on the floor or on the wall, wherever this number line is. And I like them to explain why they put that number where they did. And then I have them tape their number line right up there. Now another student might get another number and here we have a pictorial representation. So we have 234. Where is this one going to go? And we have that benchmark of 250 there, so this student needs to decide where this number is going on the board. Now I would not have my whole class have numbers yet. I would probably do this with like five to 10 numbers, but the whole class is included in the discussion. So while this student comes up and they paste the number on the board or they tape it wherever they need to, they explain it to the class, and then the class has to decide, do they agree, do they disagree, where might this number need to move, and so on. Expanded form is another way I like to have these numbers represented. So we have 400 plus 20 plus two. So 422 and students again have to decide where this number goes. And then I didn't make a card for it, but I also like to have the number word written out. So 377 would also be on one of these. And you can see this is pretty low prep. Like I said, if you just take a marker and draw it on your whiteboard or if you use painter's tape, this is just construction paper cut up that we can easily go ahead and tape up there. And this is interactive because you can also change this all the time. You can make that number line smaller, you can make it bigger, you can slowly include different ways to represent the numbers. It's totally up to you and there's so many ways you can use it. And last but not least, activity number four is circle counting. Now I have a whole video about circle counting. It looks like this right here. It's a number sense routine that I really emphasize a lot in K and one classrooms, but it can be used in second grade as well. The second grade standards want our students to be able to count to 1000 by ones, by tens and by hundreds, and really starting at any number. They should really have that place value understanding of counting that they should be given any three digit number and they should be able to go ahead and count by tens all the way up to 1,000. They can be given any three digit number and count by 100s all the way up to 1,000. So this is just another easy math warm up that you can implement at the beginning of your class. And to do it, it's just as simple as it sounds. I would have my students all sit on a rug. You can have them stand up in a circle, but they are in a circle. And then you basically start with one student and we start counting. 
Now obviously in kindergarten and first grade, we really are counting by ones to really get down that rote counting. We're counting by twos and fives and tens, but we're not going as high as our second grade students are. And to make this a little more fun for second grade students, I like to introduce these dice right here. And I will have my circle counter starter. They will come up, they will roll three dice. They will put it in whatever order they want. So let's pretend here we have let me see if I can hold it this way. We have, I'm trying to read it your way, 164. That's their three digit number. And like I said, they could form it however they wanted and they would start the counting. You would tell them, are we counting by hundreds? Are we counting by tens? Are we counting by fives? You would choose how we're counting and then students, boom, they start counting by tens. 164, 174, 184, 194, 204, 214. And they just go around the circle until you deem the activity complete. Oftentimes I'll probably have them go around the circle either two or three times and then they are done. If they are counting by 100s, I usually have them go around just once, but it's up to you. Students can also pair up for this counting activity and you do it the same way, except they just do it with a partner back and forth. So maybe before they have to do some sort of math activity, you tell them, go ahead and roll these three dice. That's your starting number. Count by tens until you get to 500 or until you get to 1000 whatever the number you want it to be. So there you have four easy and effective activities to really help your students develop that number sense through 1000. Just to quickly recap what they are, we have mix, order, and make. We have three digit place value rule, which is a free printable that you can grab today. We have to use an interactive number line and we have circle counting. I would love to know if you have used any of these in your classroom before and if you have, did your students like it? Do you have other great activities for teaching number sense to 1000? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.